All right, welcome back to another Touch Designer tutorial. And in this one, we're going to look at a feedback technique again. You know, I always sort of come back to feedback because it's just so much fun to work with. And um, yeah, there's always surprising results as very much in this one as well. So yeah, this isn't anything completely new or groundbreaking, but it's really fun to work with. And it's a simple setup that can produce a lot of different results, which is always a good sign. Okay, so let me just quickly show you a few different things that can come out of this. So I can like change the sample step here and that produces some sort of reaction diffusion look that we might know and be quite familiar with. But uh, I can also produce these sort of cells or if I get rid of this displace, it's also instantly a reaction diffusion sketch. I can also change the uh, cell size with this blur. And uh, I can also, again, get rid of this and then create this really sort of big reaction diffusion, which looks really nice as well. Mm. So that way we can already do quite a lot of things. And I think the prettiest one is if we just go like back to sort of this size and if we just bypass this slope, then we get this sort of texture, which I think is uh, really, really cool. Kind of like a zebra or I don't know, some kind of flow in a river, something like that. Could be anything really. You can also get rid of this uh, circle and obviously the circle I just put on afterwards so we can just create these sort of textures. Yeah, so there's a lot of parameters in here you can mess around with. And um, as usual, I'm just gonna delete this whole network and rebuild it from scratch with you. All right, so I'm gonna delete all of this and let's start as we so often do with a noise. I'm gonna change the resolution here to 1280 by 1280. And I'm gonna change the pixel format to 32 bit float um, RGB, this one. So we don't actually wanna have alpha in there. So I'm gonna change a few parameters of this noise. So first off, I'm gonna change the period to 0.3, it's a bit smaller. And I'm gonna get rid of the harmonics and all of this stuff. All right, so we don't actually need to do more here. I'm just gonna add a null from which we're gonna um, create the feedback network. So of course, we, we're gonna need a feedback top and as always, I want to have a keyboard in chop to be able to reset that. Okay, so now if I press one, we're going to reset the feedback loop. So I'm going to make two different chains here. So this is the first one. So we're just going to add a blur here. And I'm going to change the filter size to like 10 and the sample step to something like 0.3. Okay, then I'm going to add another blur from here add a composite from here and put that in here. And now I'm going to change the operation uh, to subtract and change the operation order. So the, this input is actually the upper one. And on my blur two, I'm going to change the pre shrink to two and the filter size to like 11. But we can change that later on as well. I'm actually also going to turn dithering on It just looks a bit better. I noticed. I can also show you on and off later on. Then I'm going to add a level. And here it's important to change both the brightness and contrast to two. And then I'm going to add a displace. From the comp, I'm actually also going to add a slope, pipe it into the displace and just bypass this displace for now and just add another displace to it. All right. So on this displace, I'm going to go down with the displace weight on both parameters to 0.001. So really quite small. And I'm going to add a null to this. Whoops. And, and just call this like FB and give it color of, whoops, color of orange. And um, just drag this back onto the feedback. So creating this sort of look here. All right, now it looks a bit weird, but we're gonna get to that. So to be able to see this uh, here, I'm going to add a null and call it BG because I've already set up um, my project here uh, to dot slash BG. We can see an error because this is expecting a second input, the displace image. So let's actually make a second chain to, to um, satisfy that operator. <laughs> that sounds so weird. Sorry about that. Um, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna add a null uh, noise. I mean, and I'm gonna uh, turn off monochrome. Go to my output 
and change RGB to just noise. And I'm going to change a few other parameters. I'm going to change period to two and get rid of all the harmonic stuff here. Right, that's all we want to do. Just add some animation, abs time dot seconds times point 0.1. So this little expression. And then I'm going to add another slope to this, no, uh, to this noise. And I'm going to change the strength to something quite high, like 500. Then I'm going to use this output and <laughs> satisfy the displays. And now you can already see our sort of reaction diffusion sketch is working here. And really the juicy and the main part is happening with these blurs. So we might have seen that from somewhere else actually using blurs and subtracting things like that for reaction diffusion. So this is already really cool, but let's see how we can make this even more interesting and how you can how we can get these styles that I showed in the beginning. So I'm gonna bypass this displace and it's gonna like go crazy at first. It's because displace weight is very high. So let's just go down with this just as we did with the other one, 2.001. And then you can already see this really cool texture now appearing here. So how can we change the texture? First off, I actually want to show you the difference to having dithering off. So you, now you can see we get these black parts. So if that's something that you want to have, then you can leave the dithering off. But I, I, I want to have everything filled, so I just turn dithering on. Dithering. <laughs> uh, the German that can't pronounce the TH. Right, so I'm going to increase the filter size on my blur and also increase the filter shrink, uh, pre-shrink. And now we can see this uh, look really changes. We can also bypass the displays to see the difference. And on our slope, we might actually want to go up with the strength here. And also, like as soon as you go up with the strength too much and don't also increase the sample steps, it's going to like go, go crazy as it just did. So I might actually want to go up one more. So now we get these sort of cells. And we can also go down again with the pre-shrink and filter size. And then we get these sort of smaller cells and almost looks like Voronoi, right? Cool, so that's one thing. Another thing is that we can do here when I think that's actually producing the prettiest results. So that's really just by displays, uh, like bypassing the slope. And now we get this sort of look, it looks like a river or uh, some kind of fur, something like that. And I think it looks really, really cool. And again, we can change the blur here, the input blur, and that will produce different results here. So we can also really go down to quite fine, quite detailed look. We can also bypass this blur for an even more detailed look. So as I said, many parameters that you can play around with. So this is really the basic free looks, like not having a displace at all produces sort of reaction diffusion. Having the displace without a slope is this sort of look. Having the displace with the slope is this sort of cell look here. Okay, so how can we add some more interesting stuff to this? Well, this is really the basic thing. One thing I, I can show you is you can add a circle or a really any shape in here to further change the, the, the way this is displaced. So we can comp with input and change the operation to difference, for example. And now there's a different displacement going on inside the circle and outside the circle. So we could also add some softness here to create this kind of look. And to be able to better see this, we might want to go here after the FB end, so after the feedback loop, and add a circle. And again, change this to comp of input and change this to uh, multiply. And then we can just go up with our background alpha and change the background color to something like this, maybe even higher. Yeah, I think 0.3 works pretty well might also want to change the softness so it sort of fits to what we had on the other one. And then we're, we're sort of creating this, this glow effect. So we're like, um, yeah, we're just using the circle without the circle. It, it even also looks nice without using that displacement circle. So if we maybe go down with the softness, even that already, I think, adds a lot to the image. But even more so if we, if we add this sort of displacement here. And as I said, this can be any shape. So this could be a five sided polygon. And then we might also want to update that here. So it looks like that. With a bit more of a setup, you could even try to incorporate your video device in your uh, like some kind of 
body tracking or any kind of animation really. Okay, so I think we have reached the end of this video. Feel free to add any kind of operators in the inside of the network here to see what happens. And uh, yeah, feel free to share your works on Instagram and tag me at Electronaut. And also I've got a Patreon if you wanna if you wanna support me, the link is in the description. Thanks so much, like really from my heart. <laughs> Thank you all to that you're already supporting me there. It's absolutely amazing. And yeah, thanks a lot for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.